Hey, Mr. Fonzie here with another technique takedown. This one is for the trombone again. And today we're going to be talking about developing beautiful tone. And I wanna go over some of the don'ts and some of the do's of just general ideas pertaining to tone and developing good tone. Okay, so um, before I even begin this, the first thing I really feel is extremely important when it comes to talking about developing great tone is developing great listening. So before we even talk about creating a beautiful sound on the instrument, we need to know what a beautiful sound sounds like. So if you haven't listened to professional trombonists, or if you're somebody who's not a trombone player, but you happen to be watching this video, if you haven't listened to a professional on your instrument, that's gonna be step one. But don't just listen once. You need to listen regularly, routinely. Make it part of your Spotify playlist or your Apple Music playlist or whatever streaming service you use. Just create a playlist or something or put it into your routinely, the things you routinely listen to. And the more that you listen to it, the more that sound concept will begin to sort of imprint itself in the way that you approach your instrument. Okay, so developing tone. Do's and don'ts. The first thing to understand about developing tone on a brass instrument just in general is that it is not the buzz that pr creates a beautiful sound. As a matter of fact, the buzz itself, <clears throat> it's not a very pretty sound. Neither is it when you, when you put it on the mouthpiece. <clears throat> right? Not a very beautiful sound. What actually creates the beauty of the sound is the air that is vibrating all of the brass and all of the, all of the other air around you. And we call that resonance. Um, basically, all these vibrations that are working together create what's called resonance. So when we play with a full sound, it doesn't mean that we're necessarily always playing with a loud sound, right? That was actually a really soft sound, but I was supporting properly and getting a nice, beautiful sound. I can play that same thing um, with a big sound, right? And really, the difference is ultimately how loud I'm playing, but everything else about my playing is exactly the same. I'm using a similar amount of air. I'm using a similar amount of, I'm using a similar approach to my buzz, uh, but I can still create a nice, big, beautiful sound. So let's talk about some do's and don'ts. First step, in my opinion, in my professional opinion, I don't believe you should buzz more than five minutes a day because buzzing is great because it focuses your air and it can develop your, it can help you to develop the muscle, which is really important. It's fantastic for that. If you do too much of it, I believe that it creates tension in your sound, and we want you to have a nice, beautiful sound. So no more than five minutes of buzzing every day, but when you do buzz, start by buzzing uh, in, a, in a comfortable register, and then as you get more warmed up, start to expand the, the, the range that you're buzzing in. So... <laughs> It's all very comfortable for me. And then as I get more warmed up, which for you, you should take like a one or two minutes at least in a comfortable register and then start to expand your range a bit more. <laughs> Until you, you kind of find each note. So that's step one of developing a beautiful sound is just developing a beautiful buzz. But remembering that, the, that the, the buzz is not what actually creates the beauty of the sound, it's the air. So as you're buzzing, focus on the air. Actually, before we move on, what helps me is to physically feel the air as it's moving. So for me, I've noticed in my higher notes especially, I have a tendency to kind of cut off the air. Uh -huh. So the first
first time that I did that, I didn't have as much air going into the higher register. And so I had to feel that. And then, then, then the key thing is if you want it to sound different, it needs to feel different, right? So it's kind of pinching off the sound instead of I'm not sure if you can, I hope you can hear that through the, the phone, but there's a lot more air that's moving in that higher note that time. A lot of that has to do with the position of my lower lip versus my upper lip. But I create a little more space that allows air to tunnel through. And this is a big don't. Now that we're on to, to this section. Don't pinch your lips, okay? The more that you squeeze or pinch your lips together to create a sound, uh, the more likely it is that you're going to create a sound that you don't want. Uh, maybe not quite as beautiful of a sound. So using the buzzing was a great demonstration of that. So I was playing a high B flat. I'm going to just play a high F just for the sake of, of um, showing you this. So this time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of pinch my lips together to get that higher note and really like use my, my lip muscle instead of my air. Um, okay, so hopefully you can hear that through the, through the recording, but... Um, it sounds very strained, very pinched off. Like it's just lacking that beautiful resonance that the trombone can have. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with that pinch. Then I'm going to go to buzzing. And I'm going to feel it on my palm. Feel the air on my palm. And I'll, what you'll notice is that the way that, that we're doing that cuts off the air. And without the airflow, we don't have beautiful sounds. So I'm going to play it first. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and buzz that. So I can feel that the air is cut off. Now I'm going to focus entirely on the air. I'm going to open everything up, relax this, create more space between my lips, between my teeth, in the back of my mouth as if I'm almost like I'm yawning. Oh. You notice the buzz sounds maybe, it's gonna sound different, it's gonna feel different. Um, it sounds more airy, right? But that's a good thing. We want that. So now when we go back to the horn. right a lot of space and less pinch right that's the biggest thing ultimately when it comes to developing beautiful tone is the ability to understand that pinching is your enemy and always going back and forth i find that this is actually a good use of buzzing is to assess whether or not you're using the proper airflow so now i'm going to try and play even higher oh i should point this out on lower notes the air support is the same as a matter of fact, if you want to develop higher notes, a higher register with beautiful sound, develop your lower register. It takes a lot of air to be able to buzz that low and to be able to play that low. So if I use that same air quality... feeling the air way out here which is excellent that means i'm using good good support and that means that as i go up to those higher notes you know i'm going to be able to have a nice beautiful supported sound understand about creating beautiful tone on trombone is to keep space use a lot of air you need to flood the horn with air all the time but it's not a, a fast like blow hard kind of air it's more of a help me kind of air 
or hut, hut, hike. But then you sustain that. That's more of the airflow. But you need to flood the horn with air. Um, make sure that you do not pinch your lips as best you can. Try not to squeeze. Allow the sound to more naturally happen from the airflow. And go back and forth from checking your airflow. You can do it with, with your buzzing. You can do it with the horn. Um, and most importantly, listen, listen, listen. Because listening is the key to developing a beautiful sound. Listening to the sounds of professional musicians that you really like. And then, of course, listening to your own sound really intensely um, to determine whether or not you're pinching or if you have, if you're developing your most beautiful sound. All right. Hope that was helpful. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.